Indonesia is a land that defies homogenization, a de facto kaleidoscope of cultures, landscapes, sights, and sounds. The 17,500 islands that make up the country are surrounded by the sea, which means that fishing is both a cultural and economic staple. Even more so for the hundreds of thousands of small-scale fishers who live and work by the sea. A particularly important fishery is octopus. Fishing for octopus takes place in many forms, from diving and gleaning to fishing with special customary tools. But commonplace is the relatively selective nature of this fishery, with almost no bycatch and very limited impact on habitats and environments in comparison to other forms of fishing. However, increased fishing pressure caused by growing demand for octopus products have incentivized both overfishing and in some cases destructive fishing. Itu kan dulu masih anak-anak kadang-kadang menyelam lah. Tapi guritanya dulu itu masih banyak nak. Kalau sekarang guritanya udah mulai habis. Dengan kalau ada tuh sulit sekali. In order to better understand the state of octopus fisheries in Indonesia, communities are being supported by organizations from across the country to instigate participatory monitoring of octopus. As fishes come in from sea, their catch is measured and recorded. And it's the community itself that is responsible for this monitoring process. This recorded data is then analyzed by fisheries experts and presented back to the community. In an open and participatory forum, Members of the community are able to examine and understand the changes that are occurring in their own fisheries. Across Indonesia, communities, empowered by a new understanding of what is happening in their fishery, are making important decisions about management. Masyarakat sepakat untuk dimonitoring data yang monitoring setiap hari yang kita ukur itu ada berat, perekor, betina atau jantan. Terus uh, data itu kemudian dikumpulkan setelah tiga bulan data itu dianalisis per bulan setiap bulan dikembalikan kepada kita setiap tiga bulan kita umpan balik ke masyarakat apa pilihan-pilihan apa pendapat masyarakat setelah tiga kali umpan balik masyarakat memutuskan mereka menyusun aturannya mereka memonitor sendiri dan pada akhirnya mereka membuka itu pada Octopus fisheries closures are a favoured tool of both conservationists and coastal communities. Because octopus grow so quickly, often doubling in size in just a few months, communities are able to benefit very quickly from a fisheries closure involving octopus. Tapi kalau perkembangan untuk untuk masalah size ada peningkatan, ada peningkatan di sisi di apa termasuk di sisi keuntungan masyarakat. Sisi ke selama tiga hari ini saya sampai kemarin itu saya bilang itu lama orang apa sampai ada ukuran yang enam enam kilo lebih itu itu saya heran. Artinya sebenarnya ada ada tiga sisi keuntungan. Setelah adanya kegiatan kesepakatan masyarakat ini, pertama ada kesadaran masyarakat, kedua peningkatan pendapatan masyarakat di situ, yang ketiga persoalan pengembang perkembangbiakan dari pedaan berita di situ memang ada. From these closures, the community has realised that conservation can pay off, both for people and for nature. Inspired by the success of closures, more ambitious management is now being considered by communities across Indonesia. But communities cannot do this alone. They need the support of regional and national government. 
dia bikin mandat mandat menyerahkan kuasa itu yang bukan mata rumah tetapi memberikan kuasa kepada kita untuk melanjutkan tanggung jawab sebagai kepala pemerintahan negeri mandat itu dibuat oleh mata rumah baru disahkan kalau disetujui oleh samir negeri Today, with partnerships between communities, conservation organizations, and the government stronger than ever, we are ready to take the next step, the launch of a new fisheries improvement project for Optimus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all um, for your attention and presence today at this event, centering the rights of small-scale fishers within fishery improvement projects. I am Christopher Giorano, uh, the technical advisor for value chains and markets at Blue Ventures. Uh, Tukuteliu is a Malagasy term for the three stones that hold up a cooking pot. It is used in Madagascar when multiple stakeholders, interests, and backgrounds must come together and share with one another to achieve something that no one single group of, or perspective could achieve on their own. Without each rock, you cannot cook because your pot will fall down. So without each viewpoint, we can achieve the best outcome for every party. That tradition is at the heart of this event and why we have invited three experts who will be forming our panel today. From Blue Ventures, we have Verona Lee McKenzie, Belize Fisheries Coordinator. From Abalobi, Stuart Duplessis, Abalobi Marketplace Community Coordinator. Ali Thani, CEO at Mumbao, will be closing out the presentations. During the first live stream half of the event, they will present, followed by a questions and answer session, where the audience will have the opportunity to submit questions. To ask a question, please use the YouTube comments if you're watching on YouTube, or the Q&A box if you're with us in AirMeet. Please ensure that your questions to the panel are concise and relevant to the theme of this event, and feel free to type your questions throughout the panel presentations. We will collect them to put the, to the panelists after the three presentations. And please remember that all comments made in this way are public and attributable to you. The panel discussion will draw out three approaches to applying a human rights-based approach to ensure community participation in value chain projects, especially fishery improvement projects. As the speakers present, we invite you to reflect on what has or has not worked in your experience in value chain projects to achieve equitable participation of fishing communities, to improve their incomes or well being, or to apply the principles enshrined in the FAO voluntary guidelines for securing sustainable small scale fisheries. Those insights will enrich the QA session and strengthen the second half of our event. After the panel, there will be a breakout discussions where we we will have the opportunity to build on a strong foundation and the information provided by our panelists. And if you forgive the metaphor, cook up a delicious discussion about best practice cases and evidence for how to effectively incorporate community-driven participation and informed consent into fishery improvement projects, value chain engagement, and more broadly, fisheries management. When you enter into the breakout rooms, you'll be able to use unmute and the camera buttons at the bottom and the chat box. We would like to create a place where everyone has the opportunity to voice their opinions and ideas. So please do contribute and allow others to contribute as well. If at any point you encounter technical problems, please send an email to digital at blueventures.org. Now, before we start the panel presentations, I wanna take a brief moment to reflect on why Blue Ventures selected this topic for the series. For almost two decades, we have supported coastal communities to develop locally led, led approaches to marine conservation that benefit people and nature alike. Over that time, we've developed a scalable model for catalyzing and sustaining marine conservation, unlocking the potential of fishing communities to protect our ocean. However, we noticed that scarcity, specifically uncertain fishing income, limited the ability of fishers and fish workers to absorb the opportunity costs of conservation. While the economic, cultural, and environmental value of marine resources might be recognized, 
frequently these marginalized actors lacked the capital to survive a temporary fishing closure or a fluctuation in sea seafood demand. Since then, we've learned supporting coastal communities to redress power imbalances and value chains, and more broadly, the aquatic food system is a delicate act. Key to any approach is participation and consent. That is why we've invited these uh, speakers here today to speak about their experience about achieving participation and consent. Though unlocking the value through coastal community participation and value chains is critical to overcome the costs of effective fisheries management and conservation, we need to ask ourselves at this time if current trends and methods for social responsibility are fully participatory, have consent from those affected, and align with these and other principles of best practice for small-scale fisheries. There are hundreds of millions of traditional fishers and fish workers in remote, rural, and urban communities around the world. With the right support, they can fundamentally reshape our relationships with the ocean. They can rebuild their fisheries, strengthen their, their livelihoods, increase their well-being, and improve the, their food and nutrition security. They can restore ocean life and sustain healthy, resilient environments for generations to come. Now, with that said, I'm delighted to introduce you to our panel. Please don't forget to type your questions throughout the panel presentations, and we'll collect them to put to the panelists after all three presentations have ended. First to speak is Ronald Lee McKenzie, Fisheries Coordinator for the BB uh, Belize Program. Through this role, she has expanded her experience in small scale fisheries and governance by working directly with fisher led organizations. She is currently leading capacity building projects to support institutional reorganization for fishing associations across Belize. The BV Belize team is tasked to bridge existing communication and engagement gaps between the Belize Spiny Lobster FIPS implementing agencies and the project's intended beneficiaries, small scale fishers. Rana Lee, please go ahead with your presentation. Thanks, Chris. So good morning, good afternoon, uh, good evening, good night, wherever you're joining us from. Uh, greetings to you and thank you so much for joining us today for this session. I am here to talk to you about our role in the Belize Family Lobster FIP. Currently, we are consultants and we are the communications and community engagement coordinator. Uh, but before I talk about what are the expectations and some of the desired outcomes of this consultancy, I want to provide an overview of the FIP and just talk a bit about uh, Belize. So if you don't know, uh, Belize is located in Central America and the Caribbean region. And, and we have a plethora of fishing communities and coastal communities. And we have three main fishery here in Belize, which include the Queen Kong, Fin Fish, and Caribbean Spinal Lobster, as you can see here. And 90%, 90% of the lobster harvested here in Belize is exported up to the U.S. market. Um, so the Belize Spinal Lobster FIP is a project that seeks to generate environmental income and social, environmental, economic, and social benefits for engaging national and international stakeholders in an expanded approach to fishery improvement that results in measurable change by 2024. Um, some of the project's core objectives are to coordinate and continuously promote um, the collaboration of national and international stakeholders in the Belizean lob lobster fishery to work on improvement across environmental, social, economic components of the fishery throughout the lifetime of the FIP. Um, other core objectives are to build social and economic capacity within the Belizean cooperatives. Here in Belize, we have two main cooperatives. We have the National Cooperative and the Northern Fishermen's Cooperative. Um, so the project seeks to build capacity for both cooperatives. And finally, another core objective of the project is to create measurable change environmentally and socially uh, within the fishery based on extended uh, fishery development work plan by 2025. So uh, the project, next slide please. So the, the FIP uh, was, the framework was developed in around 2019, um, but it didn't officially launch until last year, March 2021. And though there was a robust development uh, of the framework, 
the stakeholders quickly realize that there, there is uh, existing gaps. Um, as you can see in the top picture, we have productivity happening uh, with the FIP steering committee, and there was workshops for uh, stakeholders who are also um, MPA co-managers, but there isn't necessarily direct engagement between the steering committee and the co-ops and, and fishers who are actually harvesting the lobster. So to date, the communication and engagement with the cooperative members has been limited. And it is envisioned that a comprehensive approach to members within the communities uh, has the potential to strengthen the FIP and create ownership of fisheries of the FIP process and generally improve functioning of, of cooperatives. And so the, the, this, the existing gap created, uh, it revealed the importance of having uh, a consultancy that directly targets engagement and inclusivity of fishers across Belize. So our, and this brings us to our role uh, as the communications and community engagement coordinator. Here at BB, we value people and we believe in placing communities at the center of conservation. Currently here in Belize, we have over 3,000 uh, registered small scale artisanal fishers and we recognize the importance of this role and we wanted to capitalize on the opportunity to amplify the voices of fishers and to help define the ways in which fishers fit into this FIP and how the FIP can potentially strengthen the lobster fishery. So some expectations around our role uh, includes to, for us to develop a communication and engagement strategy between the cooperative and their members and also to execute the strategy to strengthen communication and engagement between the managing board of the cooperatives and their members. And we want to ensure that the strategy is feasible and that it supports fishers who are active members of the cooperative. So online engagement. Prior to us taking on this consultancy, the FIP really did a good job with having an online presence. The FIP, the Belize Final Lobster FIP, has a Facebook page, it has an Instagram page, it has a YouTube page. So it, it really did a good job with integrating technology. Um, and here on the slide, you can see data uh, of the audience who have been accessing content um, that have been shared on the social media page. And so we have the top communities that have been uh, interacting with the FIP social media. And I had a, a place them up here so you can visually see uh, that some of these communities are coastal communities and are fishing communities. So we can see a correlation here that fishers who reside in these communities seem to be interested in the content and the project updates that are being shared on the FIP social media pages. But we have to be realistic. We have to realize that, that social media uh, alone and online engagement alone is not a sufficient or um, uh, inclusive approach to engaging fishers simply because not all fishers have access to internet, not all fishers have access to social media or devices to create a social media account. And so we realized this when developing our strategy and uh, we've developed a community-based approach to engaging fishers. So while executing our engagement strategy, we plan to have boots on the ground and have real-time engagement with fishers. We plan to conduct community visits to consult with fishers and ascertain their current involvement in the FIP and to communicate the FIP's objectives and impact to the fishery, the lobster fishery here in Belize. We also want to listen to fishers and we want to give them the platform and the opportunity to speak their truth and express uh, their current experiences and expectations, you know, from uh, the cooperatives as, as being active members. And then lastly, we want to inform. We want to inform um, them about all the opportunities and all the ways that the, the FIP and, and the project objectives can um, impact the fishery and the opportunities that it can create for them. Um, whether it's to increase their income or have them better engaged with um, local MP managers. So, next slide, please. Scaling up engagement. Um, for scaling up engagement, we want to ensure that the cooperatives um, engage fishers not just 
um, north in northern Belize, but also in southern Belize. Currently, a large majority of fishers who are active members of the cooperatives uh, reside in northern fishing communities. And so we want to provide recommendations to both cooperatives um, to have them create opportunities for them to engage with southern fishers uh, and for them to ultimately strengthen the fit in having an expanded uh, membership and, and closing the disparity between northern and southern fishers. Um, so I'm reaching to the end of my presentation, so I would like to conclude uh, by reinforcing the reason why we chose to take on this consultancy. We here at BV, we fundamentally believe that fishers should be included and should be prioritized in any and all projects that either positively or adversely affect their livelihood. So ultimately, our goal for executing this consultancy is to champion for fishers by communicating their realities and their experiences, by empowering them and to, by empowering them through strength and communication and engagement, and by keeping them informed on all opportunities and ways in which the Belize spiny lobster fishery uh, will affect or improve the lobster fishery here in Belize. Uh, I want to end off by saying that this is an ongoing consultancy. So I'm really looking forward to the community visits that are upcoming. And I would love to share what uh, the recommendations are, uh, would love to publish what our recommendations are when we conclude this consultancy. Uh, thank you so much. And I look forward to answering any questions that you might have. Great, thank you so much, Rana Lee. And um, I think you presented a wonderful case on how FIPS and uh, a fishery improvement project or more broadly a value chain project might be used as a way to uh, increase fisher participation, not only in fisheries management, but ensure that their agency and their empowerment increases over the lifespan of the, of the work. So thank you. And we'll look forward to hearing what the audience uh, has to, to ask. Um, next up to speak is Stuart, du, uh, Stuart Duplessis from Avalobi Marketplace, uh, where he's a community, uh, community coordinator. Stu previously was a traditional fisher for around 18 years and got involved with Avalobi in 2015 with Fisher Catch Data Capture via the Avalobi Fisher app. He subsequently joined Avalobi as a staff member in 2018 as community engagement coordinator and uh, supporting training. Stu is involved with the CFIP in Strice. Bay, uh, South Africa, and the application of the FIPS Social Responsibility Assessment Tool to that FIP since 2020. Stu, you have the floor. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's evening where I am. Um, so uh, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, Matt, can we move over to the next slide? Um, so just a little background, um, a disengaged society is an unsustainable society, so let's just dive in. Um, I'd like to share an overview of that, some insights on our ongoing work in South Africa in small-scale fisheries and our community-level improvement projects in particular. Um, and this slide speaks to the pre uh involvement in the fishing community where we can see uh, from a catcher's point of view, um, over catching, um, you know, and from a market dynamic um, that there's no transparency. Um, next slide. Um, so this is this is where we come in. Abalobi is an African-based social enterprise with global outreach. And as you know, our mission is to contribute towards thriving, equitable, and sustainable small-scale fishing communities in Africa and beyond through the joint development of technology for good. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, we work with small-scale fishers uh, and fisher workers and co-design inclusively community-led technologies that reposition them to engage on equal footing with markets, management, and as an attractive contributor to the fourth industrial revolution. Key to this is our tech and touch approach, whereby we underpin everything that we do uh, with capacity building and training to ensure that any product or service that we co-design is readily usable for the people to use it. Our flagship uh, platform is the Abalobi Marketplace, a digital seafood market that connects fishes, catches directly to consumers. The marketplace also 
serves as a catalyst to rebuild small-scale fisheries and repositioning them on an equal footing in markets and management. Next slide. Uh, Person to this model of uplifting and repositioning, we spend time carefully building out and really defining our community supported fisheries approach. This is more than connecting a connection between fishers and markets though. The Abalobi marketplace facilitates the overall upgrading of fishers and fish workers operations from significantly enhancing cold chain and logistics to fully traceable traceability, giving them a digital identity assist in the formalization of various roles within the fisheries and a fair remuneration of all those involved in the value chain. It's a way where we're able to reposition small scale fishers in the markets and provide them with a clear digital and financial footprint. This is not just about securing better prices for the fishers and fish work laborers though. It's also about ensuring that food security in their communities is greatly enhanced through our market days that provide affordable catches to local community members. And by upgrading fishers markets, digital positioning and value chains, we assist, we're able to assist in repositioning them in the fisheries sector and start rebuilding their fisheries from the ground up. Next slide. So looking at the impact of our program is clear. We're forging tangible connections between fishers and markets, creating the foundation for a cohort of fishers and fish workers who have a digital presence, greatly enhanced market positioning and visibility, and the skills and the technology necessary to drive change from within. In our flagship community, Straysby, that's where I'm from, uh, on the south coast of South Africa, we formalized this market transformation further through the launch of our triple bottom line community level fisheries improvement project that has run comprehensive risk assessments across social, ecological and financial spheres. It's something that we and the Straits by Fishers are incredibly proud of and we're looking forward to officially having the CFIP registered on fisheriesprogress.org in the coming months. Um, Conventional FIP look at the ecological and financial components and assessments. The CFIP or triple bottom line includes the community and social components and assessment of the fishing. The, the SRAT, a social risk assessment tool, various participatory approaches and techniques were developed and used. The participants were very vocal uh, during the workshops, which was excellent, which was challenging to do during a COVID lockdown. And it was very successful when we used the, what we call the four floor crossing exercise to determine and measure key indicators. Indicators like freedom of association were debated and were correctly measured. Next slide. Zooming out a bit, um, just to give you a sense of some of the highlights that we've seen so far. And I think the results speaks for themselves. In the four years since launching the Abalobi marketplace in South Africa, despite significant hardships that we and the rest of the world have faced, we've seen Abalobi households move from a state of majority food insecurity to one that is food secure. We've seen more than threefold increase in fishers' earnings through the Abalobi marketplace. And of the 44 women active on this platform as fishers, post-harvest quality control workers, and value-added uh, product participants, we've seen more than 1.5 million paid to them directly. Okay, so what's the upshot, upshot of this? Well, I mentioned that we're conducting a triple bottom line risk assessment in the stress by fisheries with the FIP currently under review by Pro Fisheries Progress. We're hoping to have the CFIP officially registered on the platform within the next two months. I think it's important though to note that whilst we put together a comprehensive work plan for the FIP, the work never stops. And we're constantly working with the fishers to improve uh, market access, explore financial services and organize uh, organizational development. And it all, set the conditions in place in other fisheries to do the same. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Stu. And I think the, the Abelobi case that you just presented really is clear about um, one of the core principles enshrined in the voluntary guidelines, specifically that trade and commerce um, through the platform that Abelobi has created is carried out in a fair and honest way that benefits everyone equally, leading to local value retention and and that the trade that is occurring doesn't leave local markets depleted of aquatic foods that can meet nutritional needs of fishers in, in their communities. So thank you so much for, for your presentation. Now, the, the last to speak, uh, closing our panel, is Ali Thani, uh, CEO from Wambao Coastal Community Network. As a founding member more than 12 years ago, Ali drew on his 30 years of experience working within many sectors, including government and international NGOs. Notably, care international and wwf tanzania over his career he shifted from forestry to marine conservation focusing on communication awareness and training to the benefit of local communities in his role at uh, in Mumbuao, ali seeks to mentor and coach the next generation of african conservation leaders ali please go ahead with your presentation okay Okay, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, just uh, wanted to present about uh, our organization, uh, how we are uh, participating or, or how we are involved in fisheries improvement project. Uh, we are working with the community in coastal Tanzania uh, to build their capacity to access and manage their resources in a sustainable way. And uh, we have seen our vision is to thrive, thriving coastal community and sustain is, and sustainably manage healthy marine ecosystem in Tanzania, including Zanzibar. We have our four core goals, key goals. Key goals. Uh, one is strengthening our local marine uh, resource governance institution, increasing benefit from sustainable use of marine resources, improving policy and legislation to support community management, and uh, finally facilitating sustainable marine conservation and management. Next. Uh, our we our work uh, reflect is reflecting to uh, to uh, uh, small scale fisheries guideline and uh, core management guideline of Tanzania and uh, sustainable development goals. Uh, our strategy as uh, Mombao strategies and also uh, our government uh, policies and legislation. Go ahead. Next. Uh, in implementing all of our activities, we have uh, uh, our uh, we have four 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 steps. The first step is uh, baseline surveys, whereby uh, we are doing baseline household surveys, annual capacity assessment, participatory resource mapping, participatory in water monitoring, value chain, and key fisheries documented uh, involved in key uh, stakeholder in the market chain. Uh, uh, also, we are uh, uh, we are involved in the management in the implementation, whereby we build capacity of the community in bylaws, fisheries catch monitoring, in water uh, biodiversity monitoring, establishment of fisheries closures uh, like temporary and uh, permanent closure. Also, uh, we are uh, working with the gear trials uh, to community, as well as uh, marine resource management planning, including setting up the target for uh, conservation target, zoning, and uh, CMG management planning. Uh, in the next step, we are working uh, with the community for building their capacity, more specifically capacity building trainings on their governance, including gender representation, capacity building training, community, MCS and patrol, collaborative fisheries management, capacity building to adapt to good governance system. And everyone here participates and agree in plans, agreed by on bylaws and joint enforcement. Uh, we have also uh, our incentives uh, for sustainable management and livelihood, including establishment of revenue collection system for benefit manage for uh, everyone and benefit sharing, uh, support formulation of conservation eco credits, and uh, 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 in this uh, we uh, uh, involve community in the participatory planning, implementation, and decision makings, uh, whereby more than 75% of these uh, 
conservation eco credit uh, women growth members. Uh, we are also having another incentive, uh, what we call participatory, participatory market system development and uh, co-management learning and advocacy network, as well as small business trainings. Next. Uh, just to elaborate further on participatory market system development toward implementation of uh, value addition uh, in fisheries improvement projects, uh, we uh, work with the community. We work uh, uh, right now, we work at least uh, seven communities to establish closure and practicing uh, participatory market system development experience increasing, whereby we experience increasing price from T shilling. 3,500 Tanzania money to 6,000 Tanzania money. Within this uh, uh, category, uh, we are uh, facilitating uh, value chain mapping as well village, as, well as village uh, preparation work for participatory market system and uh, stakeholder workshops, uh, following up of implementation of uh, participatory market system development, as well as uh, prepare and implementation of benefit sharing protocol. Next. Uh, another thing in uh, this uh, is participatory resource mapping uh, for management planning. Uh, and here we have at least 11 communities prepared and adopted their resource management plans. And within this, uh, uh, we are planning together, uh, we are identified the resource, where are the resources and what are the resources. Uh, we are doing both in the field and uh, on the classroom. And then community themselves, they accept. Uh, we are also engaging community in the establishment of conservation eco credit, I said before, that 750 members benefited to join the groups and access the credit, uh, and 7% uh, of them are women. And here we are uh, also facilitating uh, uh, a group formulation and uh, training for business training, as well as uh, issuing uh, uh, credits for the community groups. Uh, we are also doing group following up uh, through monitoring by community facilitators and support technical staff. Next. Hello. Next. Next. Oh. Uh, we are engaging community to establish a uh, closure octopus, a uh, reef closure for octopus as an entry point in fisheries co-management. And why this? We are, we are doing this because uh, octopus closure is uh, providing quick benefit to the community and uh, is like a convincing power to the community. Uh, in here, we have at least 15 community established reef closure uh, in Zanzibar and Tanzania mainland. Uh, within this, we are starting with scoping, doing awareness raising uh, to the village and uh, neighboring village and uh, through uh, village assemblies and also uh, we are working with them uh, for site selection and demarcation and agreed by laws uh, formulation and enforcement on also participating in opening protocol whereby community within this village are uh, the place to to, uh, to 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 benefit with the with the resource which they managed thank you very much Thank you, uh, Ali, for presenting the, the work that Mumbao is doing in Tanzania, and especially about how um, through participatory methods, especially participatory market systems development, you're bringing in uh, multiple voices and multiple perspectives. I think that fits quite nicely into one of the other principles enshrined in the voluntary guidelines, uh, where all parts and actors of the value chain should be recognized as important and included in the decision-making process, especially those who work in pre and post-harvest activities, since their livelihoods are also dependent on coastal fisheries. So now we've reached the point where we are accepting questions from the audience. Um, so please, if you're able, put your questions into um, the whatever chat you might find yourself, Air Meet, YouTube. Uh, the first question will be for Stuart. Is the Avalobi platform available in multiple languages? And could you say a bit more about the floor crossing exercise you mentioned, how it's practically done um, and what kind of impact it would have on 
uh, community participation. Uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, yes, the Abelobi platform in South Africa um, is in uh, in three languages, and then we also have other languages in um, in our international uh, work that we do. Uh, then, um, with regards to the the second part of your question, uh, the floor crossing exercise, um, one of the um, key tools that we needed to use uh, in the social risk uh, assessment. Um, was actually after we've done uh, surveys, telephonic surveys, um, that was done uh, by a community member in Strasbourg um, and myself, uh, we needed to to hold a, a workshop. And if you collate all the answers and you come together, and uh, my, my example was freedom of association, um, living in South Africa in a new democracy, um, thinking of do I, can I associate, um, can I go to where my traditional fishing grounds are? Um, and the, the normal answer would of course be because we're living in a democracy, it would be yes, and everybody would answer yes. Um, but what we did is we actually split the groups up uh, into, not in, into one group and let them decide. And that's what we call the floor crossing, you know? So it's, it's like, um, Yes, by law, I can go uh, into any place that I want to, uh, but there is still a sort of a stigma attached um, that uh, if you're looking at, at traditional fishers that shouldn't be in, a, in an area where there's now more tourism or there's more recreational fishing happening. And, and that movement, you could guide, everybody said yes, but at, at some point someone said, yeah, it's actually very uncomfortable for me to be there, you know, so... Um, using that as a tool to get a more accurate uh, um, uh, assessment. Thank you, Stuart. Um, I think that was a, a great and uh, detailed answer to, to the question. Um, Ronalee, the, the next one is, is for you. Um, essentially, is the Belize FIP a basic or a comprehensive FIP? And could you tell us a bit more about how the voices and engagement of Fisher might strengthen the FIP um, in achieving its goals? So, uh, yes, uh, the Belize Ben Lobster FIP is comprehensive and the end goal is MSC certification. Um, recently, both cooperatives have adopted traceability apps, um, which is a requirement of MSC. So, that's the first part of the question. And the second part of the question. Uh, as it relates to Fisher strengthening um, the FIP, uh, I believe that engagement from them, um, especially active members of cooperatives, by expanding membership of the cooperatives, I think that um, them vocalizing their experiences uh, would create opportunities for them to actively participate in, in the project, which would uh, make the project more successful um, by participating in project activities. And Ronalee, a, a quick follow-up question there. Um, can you tell us a bit more how Fishers would continue to be engaged after BV's role uh, expires? Sure. So the recommendations that we provide to both cooperatives and the steering committee would do exactly that to ensure their recommendations would be for the steering committee and for the cooperatives to have them ensure that continued engagement uh, can be done. And the recommendations would be uh, recommendations that would be able to be sustained. So realistic and practical and sustainable uh, engagement and communication framework um, that would allow them to independently continue engagement without BB's intervention. Great, and uh, Stu, do you see any similarities uh, between at least maintaining uh, Fisher engagement with the CFIP in South Africa? Yes, absolutely. Um, it is, uh, like, like I said, it's an ongoing thing. You know, uh, times change and, 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 and fishing as well. So it's important, very important for us to, uh, to remain on the ground floor, um, to look at what is happening in society, uh, in fishing communities and, and still use those tools um, to get a proper um, measurement for, uh, especially the SRAT component of, of a CFIP. Thank you. Um, 
So one question that we do have from the audience, maybe Stu or, or Rana Lee or Ali, um, we can perhaps go in order uh, because it, it seems that it's generalized for, for all three of you. Um, do you see that there's any disconnect between the interpretation of FIPS by the Conservation Alliance for Sustainable Seafood, um, one that is based, uh, let's say, strongly on the MSC framework or the MSC standard, and then how your three organizations have decided to approach the concept and the model of a fishery improvement project. Um, maybe Ali, could you go first? Actually, you are not directly uh, participating in uh, MCS, uh, M uh, but we are participating in a participatory market system development whereby um, uh, initially uh, fishers uh, or community are met uh, to discuss about uh, the process and uh, whereby uh, our staff will, uh, uh, is going to facilitate this kind of event. Uh, afterwards, uh, community meeting with the buyers and uh, community come back again to discuss about the prices and other things related to octopus. And uh, finally, uh, the workshop, the big workshop to discuss about uh, the price of, uh, of the octopus. Uh, and then they come uh, to agree with the, what we call uh, uh, participatory market system protocol, whereby uh, they are going to use. And uh, this participatory market system protocol is going to be uh, uh, monitored by the fishers as well as uh, the staff. Thank you, Ali. And um, just to, to follow up quickly before moving on to, to Rana Lee, is that process, especially because um, Wambao isn't pursuing MSC certification, and why did you maybe take that tact or is there a specific reason why uh, you felt that participatory market systems development was the more appropriate approach for small scale fisheries? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we practiced that because uh, initially uh, uh, the price of, uh, of the octopus is uh, for buyers to make decision on the price. And uh, women are not uh, also involved in the uh, making decision of the price. Uh, you may find that uh, women are giving lower prices uh, than the men. Uh, so that difference is, uh, forces, forced us uh, to, 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 to prepare the, uh, and use this participatory market system development, whereby everyone, every stakeholder in the value chain participate to, and uh, to, to put forward their recommendation as well as uh, to make decision of the all on the price of, uh, of, the, of, of the octopus. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ali. Um, Ronali, I, I recognize that Vivi's role is specifically about um, fisher participation uh, and not so much about the specific policies either with related to CAS, um, MSC certification or other FIP interpretations. So I was wondering if you could tell us uh, potentially a bit more about um, maybe the, the approach that BV is taking as a means to uh, potentially respond to some of these new policies or even just the uh, priorities and the focus being on uh, fisher participation and not so much on these other two points that the, the audience has asked. Sure, I think you described oh. exactly what um, our strategy to executing this consultation is. You know, we want to take uh, the feedback that we get from fishers to the steering committee and to uh, the the implementation agency of this project, which is TNT and Future Fish, and we want to let these uh, organizations know how transparent the fishers are with experiencing their current, with sorry, expressing their current experiences, and um, you know, kind of um, implore them to take uh, this feedback into consideration as they navigate through project activities. Thank you, Rana Lee. And I think, Stu, you know you're, you're up. Um, but I, I suppose you, you mentioned in your presentation that you're uh, putting, you have not yet done it, but you're thinking or trying to put the CFIP onto fishery progress. So um, through that, 
process have you seen in your conservation alliance for the sustainable seafood or even the MSC framework or MSC standard more broadly? Um, Chris, apologies. Uh, you broke up the last 15 seconds. Can you just repeat that? Uh, yeah, uh, essentially, as you go through the process of putting um, the, the CFIP onto fishery progress, um, have you noticed basically any differences between what's expected of you for that versus the work that's already been engaged or implemented to ensure community participation in the in the CFIP? Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, uh, if I can put it this way, um, I, don't, I don't think there's really a, um, the proper word isn't disconnect between um, what we see as a traditional FIP um, and that of a, of a CFIP. I think there's a process of uh, these process evolving um, and making sure that it is not just about um, the ecological and financial um, components of a FIP, but also the social, uh, the human dynamic of it. Um, which is really, really important in, in places like where uh, we live in South Africa, in Straspire, where there was there was sort of a, a dynamic where all focus is, faced, uh, is, is, is placed on um, the biological or ecological component and the financial component. And this does not include um, the human dynamic, uh, the social dynamic of it. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's something new. Uh, and it's the process um, that that we need to start uh, using. Thank you. Um, it's specifically about one of the tools or methods that you mentioned in your presentation. Um, essentially, could you tell us a bit more about uh, how community resource mapping works and what are some of the techniques or methods that it uses to ensure that communities are participating in the management of their near shore resources. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the community resource mappings uh, is, is an exercise whereby uh, community who are involved uh, in the classroom and in the field uh, to identify their resources, uh, where are uh, the position of those resources and uh, how these resources are used by the community who are accessing these resources uh, and then uh, putting together the information for uh, to help in the management planning uh, for the community. It's called resource management plan, community resource management uh, plan. Thank you, Ali. Uh, so that was our final question for the panelists, but if you have any others, please continue to put them in and we can share them uh, with the panelists afterwards. Uh, right now we're moving into the breakout session or the breakout portion of this event. Uh, to join a breakout group, all you need to do is find a seat at the table which matches the language group you wish to join. To do so, uh, just click a seat next to your table of choice. And remember, once a table is full, pick another one. Um, so because of some attendance constraints, the tables were prioritized a specific language, but our facilitators in each table will help support translation if needed. Um, and we're going to have around 35 minutes for discussion and your session will start uh, once the table is filled. So please go ahead, select your table and we look forward to hearing more from you during those breakout, uh, breakout events.